Recording is in progress. So thank you very much, Andrew. As always, uh, I do start these events uh, in the mornings by acknowledging those who came before us on this land. Uh, I'd like to say a land acknowledgement. So actually, I probably also should turn on my video so everybody can see me. Uh, so we begin today by acknowledging that we walk upon the traditional territories uh, of Indigenous peoples and we recognize their history, spirituality, culture and stewardship of the land. We're grateful to all Indigenous groups for their commitment to protect the land and its resources and we are committed to reconciliation, partnership and enhanced understanding. We acknowledge the land we're meeting on here in the greater Toronto area is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Wendat, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Anishinaabe peoples, and is now home to many diverse peoples. Uh, we'd also like to acknowledge the land we're on here at the, is at the meeting place of two treaties, the lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit and those of the First Nations of the Williams Treaty. Uh, we would thank them and other Indigenous peoples for sharing this land with us. We also acknowledge and recognize all of the world's Indigenous peoples as stewards of Mother Earth. Uh, so now uh, I should be sharing my screen. Just a second here. Show go. <laughs> That's very strange. There we go. So we'll share your screen. Good morning, Juliet. I'm seeing you now. <laughs> our point. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> okay, so we have our third Tea Diplomacy Initiative event. Uh, so welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Lloyd Halfordy, uh, the Chief Ecosystem Director, Program Development Director, and Sustainable Society Consultant for Energyme University, uh, which is headquartered in Manhattan, uh, New York. I am located in the city of Markham uh, in the greater Toronto area in southern Ontario, Canada. Uh, Energyme University is a private 5013C nonprofit company in New York City uh, and a member of the UN Global Compact and a UN Academic Impact member and partner. Uh, Energyme U is a virtual university created to help empower global populations to reestablish a sustainable balance with their local environments. So this is uh, the third Tea Diplomacy Initiative event. So the Ad Hoc International Advisory Board of Goodwill Ambassadors uh, Glo Global Unity Network Tea Diplomacy Initiative uh, is intended to connect local people in communities uh, that may not otherwise ever get a chance to talk to each other. Uh, the event is being co-hosted by Global Peace Let's Talk uh, in partnership with the Global Forum for Sustainable Rural Development. Uh, so this event connects local farmers, growers, and entrepreneurs across geographies and among people, members of communities uh, that may not otherwise ever get a chance to talk to each other, get to know each other as people. So the idea is to sit down, even if only virtually, have tea, relax, and discuss local solutions to global problems like food security, hunger, climate change, the environment, peace, security, and the well-being of all, the, all people in each of our own local communities. So the people who are participating will also discuss, among other things, what kinds of teas they like to drink, what unique teas are grown in their local communities or regions, uh, how important these teas are to their local people and cultures. Uh, so actually, just give me a second and I will open the chat as well. I uh, will put some information into the chat every once in a while as I speak as well. So the first thing I'm putting is my own contact information. So the uh, T Diplomacy Initiative, I start this presentation by giving recognition to Andrew Networks, uh, which also uh, rebroadcasting production ready episodes of these kinds of events on the uh, ayagba.org domain. Uh, also redirected to UCIT TV site. Uh, this particular event co-hosted by Unity Net International, uh, which is building our primary global partnership network, the Global Unity Network, which is demonstrating SDG 17 partnerships for the goals. Uh, on behalf of the Ad Hoc International Advisory Board of Goodwill Ambassadors and Activists, uh, IAGBA, uh, and where we're also seeking to promote 
and support the local implementation of the various solutions for achieving uh, what we call a collaborative regenerative economy that leaves no one behind. Uh, so our other primary co-hosts for the event are the Global Peace Let's Talk organization and the Global Forum for Sustainable Rural Development. Uh, I, again, put into the chat some information about these organizations so that everybody can look and find that. So third diplomacy event, uh, our other partners include, of course, the Global Forum for Sustainable Rural Development and the Global Peace Let's Talk, but we also partner with the Ad Hoc International Advisory Board of Goodwill Ambassadors and Activists, IAGBA, at the Global Unity Network, Andrew Networks, uh, World Humanitarian Organization for Peace and Equity, WOPE, uh, SAGA Foundation, We Energy and Global Cooperation, Turtle Island, Drawdown Markham, Climate Change Solutions Education and Training Hub, Carbon Shot Earth, Sustainable Marketplace for Climate Solutions, Todds and Kids in South Africa, Jehovah Alive for Old Age, Jafoa in Uganda, the National Federation of Women Farmers and Appropriate Technology Asia in Nepal, Tralight Foundation in Malawi, Soweto CSI Council in South Africa, Gemma Skaters Youth Development Program, um, the Village Synergy in Uganda, the Five Points Youth Foundation, Edfu Foundation, Future Lift Foundation, Cycle of Success, and Gemma Productions, among others. Uh, so again, uh, I will put in the chat uh, links for people to visit all of these partner organizations as well. So just give me a sec, and I will do this so that everybody has information and you are able to save the chat uh, near the end of this presentation as well. Um, we allow everybody to connect uh, and learn about these organizations uh, so that we are working together in synergy with each other. And so this is a part of the work we do at the Global Unity Network um, and keeping our vision aligned uh, toward a common outcome for all people and the betterment of our communities. So uh, that ends the first page of our partnerships. Now we move to the second page. Uh, so we do have additional partners of the IAGPA Global Unity Network T Diplomacy Initiative. Uh, during this third event, uh, including the Unity Women's and Feminist Network, uh, Cato Asset Services Help Community Development, Cash Community Development, the Indigenous Global Unity Network, Unity Net Culture Adversity, Unity Tourism Network, uh, the African Youth and Tourism Network, Maui Aloha Project, uh, Global Unity Network, Climate Smart Kitchens Network, the Kindred Kitchens, Black History 365 Actions, of Vulnerable Women United for Peace and Sustainable Development uh, and African Coaches League. Uh, again, in the chat, I am putting the links to these additional partner organizations as well, uh, so that people have those um, information at their disposal. And they can visit any of the partners that may have, be of interest to them uh, in their work or in their daily lives. So I am just take a second to do this. Some sort of system of automation for all of this stuff eventually uh, as we move forward. Um, this is hopefully something we will be able to build into, for instance, our uh, platform that we have been talking about. Uh, the uh, interchange for peace um, as we bring together our local communities. Uh, solidarity uh, toward common approaches we are taking to achieve uh, peace and regenerative development in our communities. So finally, we have one more page this time. This is our third T Diplomacy Initiative event. Uh, so this time we have a few more partners uh, of this T Diplomacy Initiative, uh, including Unity Eco Village Network, uh, PMAN, Precious Vision for Man Prestige Enterprises, the JBS Foundation, uh, and the Bridges of Hope Community Organization, along 
with, of course, UnityNet International. Uh, so again, I put in the information for these organizations in the chat so people have access to the, this, this, these organizations and can learn more about who they are. Okay, so we are now uh, moving forward. Uh, this third Tea Diplomacy Initiative live and recorded event is happening today on Sustainable Gastronomy Day. Uh, so this uh, event will have themes related to discussing the kinds of teas and foods that people like to drink and eat and what unique teas uh, and foods are grown in their own local communities and region, uh, how important these teas and foods are through their local people and cultures. Uh, we're also discussing how important it is to grow tea uh, and other foods uh, more than just sustainably. Ideally, our foods can be grown uh, the fresh, local, regenerative, climate smart way uh, in all our local communities. Uh, so we're also discussing how all of our UnityNet members can support all of the female and feminist humanitarian entrepreneurs uh, who are members of the Global Unity Network uh, and their plans to establish unique and culturally relevant local cooperative, collaborative community unity garden enterprises uh, in each of their local communities in a way that reflect the local cultures of each country, city, community, or village. Um, again, uh, I put some information in the chat about some of the organizations uh, that uh, I mentioned uh, here uh, during this opening of the Tea Diplomacy Initiative event. Uh, so today's event is the result of our efforts at organizing uh, to have this third uh, virtual Tea Diplomacy event. Um, during this virtual Tea Diplomacy event, we are bringing together people from across our business and development networks, uh, posing questions to leaders and other high level decision makers as we sit down virtually, have a cup of tea uh, with some of our global community network members who are part of the grassroots communities, especially with those who are living in and doing work in the various marginalized communities around the world. Uh, so the conversations that we're asking our participants to discuss during these moderated virtual casual discussions between sustainable development decision makers and professionals in our grassroots uh, members who are doing some of the on the ground work in the various local communities of the Global Unity Network are related uh, to the themes that I mentioned in the previous slide. Uh, on this page, you'll also see our social media, uh, which you can also join, uh, which especially if you are watching this on Facebook or otherwise, uh, will give you the opportunity to join one of our future Tea Diplomacy Initiative virtual casual discussions between these high level decision makers and the people who are living in those grassroots communities. So again, I will put in the chat uh, the link to the Deep Diplomacy Initiative social media. Uh, so today is Sustainable Gastronomy Day, uh, which emphasizes the need to focus the world's attention on the role that sustainable gastronomy can play uh, it also reaffirms that all cultures and civilizations uh, are contributors and crucial enablers, enablers of sustainable development. Uh, the UN General Assembly adopted this day on uh, December 21st, 2016. Again, that is a link to more information. So we'll now take a short interlude uh, while our Tea Diplomacy Initiative Port po Poet Laureate uh, will recite the opening poem for us uh, to contemplate before we begin our discussions. I will resume this opening presentation following recitation of this poem. We are people of our own color. Seven seas and one big ocean. It doesn't matter how big, small, dark, light, Christian or not you are. We all come from the same origins. Origins that when we trace footprints lead us to the central heart of Africa. Cause Africa should unite and nothing will bite. Instead, we will forever have peaceful nights. Africa uniting wouldn't be bad. Instead, it will never hurt. Trees, allow me to be your garden at least. 
so that I could plant these political seed into your cultivated mind with the best thought of negativity. We are last in this negative of our own democracy. Right now my broken beaten bone skeleton wants to escape this flesh. My soul is rejecting this temple hospitality of one who be debate. You see, we were never told about the secret ingredients that they used to cook this system. This system was cooked with a four-sized traditional pot, but we were never invited into the inns of financial taste. All you did, black child, was to feast on that racism that was served to you on a silver platter, so that Mahinya Hinya, seven colors, the shininess of it could blindfold you. Your I have fought has made deals for dessert. But what about the main meal, black child? We are still enslaved by our own memories. See, once upon a time there was I reciting poems with meaningless senses and unengineered sentence language construction. Therapy of my words wounded so many innocent souls I'm lost in translation. Tongue clicks, Ubuntu transplant, guilty to innocent endless transformations I'm so confused in my lost thoughts. Perhaps I'm losing it, isn't it? Yes. Yes, I've been here and they've all been there, distant relatives. 300 Spartans, the rise of my ancestors to you, godly, amen. The last breathless word you would inhale. We are still enslaved by our own memories. Yet we are seven seas and one big ocean. Thank you very much. So, um... I did want to remind everyone uh, during this uh, very first uh, tea diplomacy event uh, that we did on March 21st, uh, one of the reasons that we did our inaugural event on that day was because it was also the International Day of Forests. Um, the International Day of Forests celebrates and raises awareness of the importance of all types of forests. Each year, various events celebrate and raise awareness of the importance of all these forests and trees outside of forests for the benefit of current generations. Uh, so I, I will put into the chat as well information about International Day of Forests. Um, the reason this is important is because we do want to highlight the importance of three polyculture food forests, um, which are a type of perennial polyculture garden based on a forest ecosystem in which more species or crop varieties are grown in one patch of space at the same time. So food forests, as they're known, are a form of polyculture in which different layers of fruit bearing or edible plant species are mixed. Uh, they're also important because of their function in maintaining things like soil health and biodiversity, along with greater resilience and stability of natural systems. So food forests have several advantages compared with monoculture. Uh, first of all, the soil de degradation uh, occurs less often uh, and the different harvested products can increase yields. So food forests are also a source of social cohesion through a practice of inclusive farming and other economical activities. Again, in the chat, I put uh, information about uh, these systems that we are promoting as well. Uh, so, I wanted to mention the Global Unity Network Unity Gardens as a branded learning garden um, intended to deliver life value peace education in the context of open source regenerative climate smart landscapes or infrastructure solutions uh, with the Unity Gardens intended to be independent, local, collaborative, cooperative enterprises uh, that are used to deliver a variety of education, educa and, and engagement uh, and interactive community learning about the solutions that will help the children of the future adapt to a radically different climate and potentially radically different paradigms of living uh, than what we know today. Uh, so it starts with the delivery of various progressive, practical and transformative curriculum like uh, the Buckminster Fuller programs along with various humanitarian entrepreneurship skills training in these practical settings, uh, practicum learning, uh, every Unity Garden is intended to be both off-grid and renewable energy powered, so no diesel generators or other such things, except perhaps for emergency backup, 
uh, and will be connected to each other via our Interchange for Peace virtual collaborative network. So again, I put into the chat some information about our Unity Gardens network uh, and other related groups of the Global Unity Business Group, uh, Unity Net International. Uh, so the Unity Garden classrooms uh, that I talked about are intended to be independently operated, uh, but set up in collaboration with existing schools and a number of different partners in local communities uh, so that all learners in every local community can gain access to the local and the remote and virtual practicum learning programs and where our global unity network FFH members uh, can also learn skills about how to grow process cook market sell and trade the various types of regenerative climate smart food and related nutritional and medicinal and other types of locally produced regenerative products both within their own local communities as well as regionally national continentally and even internationally uh, in order to produce income and greater prosperity for themselves and for the people in their own local communities, eventually for all people on all continents uh, with the intention and goal of leaving no one behind. Uh, so at this time, uh, Unity Gardens come in five different configurations uh, as actual Unity Gardens, uh, Climate Smart Food Gardens, uh, Unity Forests, Climate Smart Kitchens, Climate Smart Education and Training Centers, also known as Smart Learning Centers, and Wheel of Life Farms and Farm Schools. Uh, so again, in the chat, you'll find some links uh, to these uh, different types of unity gardens and the related networks that we are establishing as well. So the unity forests especially are important uh, unity gardens. Uh, they were originally based on the concepts of the CSV gardens with, that were delivered by the Foundation for Building Sustainable Communities, which has their own Victory Forest brand, uh, but our Unity Forests are uniquely delivered in the context of a regenerative 3D polyculture food forest. Uh, I had mentioned before that our the establishment of the Unity Forests as being an essential part of a process of practical reconciliation with all of the Indigenous peoples of the world, one country, one community, one watershed at a time. And practical reconciliation needs developing local partnerships with all of the indigenous peoples of the world and returning stewardship of land back to the hands of those indigenous peoples for the purpose of ensuring ongoing and sustainable productive management of our local landscapes and biodiversity in perpetuity uh, for the purpose of ensuring that humanity itself will be able to survive in the coming changes in our physical, economic, social, and cultural environments. So uh, I put, uh, again, links to the Unity Forest Network as well as our other partners, uh, including uh, the Foundation for Building Sustainable Communities. Uh, so at this point in time, uh, we can now have our casual open discussions uh, that are moderated uh, by Dr. Nikki DePina from Global Peace Let's Talk. In particular, I'd like to recognize uh, all of our guests today uh, I wanted to mention again that during the first and second DT Diplomacy Initiative events, our special guest was Dr. Gianta Chodhuri, uh, who is an associate professor at the National Institute of Rural Development in Pan Panchayati Raj, Northeast Regional Center, uh, Ministry of Rural Development and the Government of India, uh, who is also associate editor for the International Journal of Rural Development and Management Studies and TUI, a, a Journal of Tribal Life and Culture. Um, he is also a board member of the Forum for India Development Cooperation, as well as the founder of the Global Forum for Sustainable Rural Development. Uh, I'd also like to invite everyone on this call to introduce themselves if they so wish, uh, starting with the women, uh, where everyone wishes to discuss um, these uh, topics. Uh, including what kinds of teas and foods you like to drink and eat, what teas and foods are grown in your local communities or regions, how important these teas and foods are to your local people in your community, uh, why it's significant to your local culture. Of course, you can also talk about uh, the other theme of the discussion, which is related to the Sustainable uh, Gastronomy Day uh, and how we might be able to produce our food in ways that move even us uh, beyond sustainability. Uh, you can also discuss, of course, about the importance of establishing productive forests as these uh, Unity Forest Unity Gardens. Um, I ask that you raise your hand by going to the bottom of the Zoom screen 
I click raise hand, we'll call on you. Um, open your microphone in order to introduce yourself. Have a casual chat with the rest of the people on the call. Uh, please be respectful, lighthearted, uh, importantly, positive in all your comments and discussions. Uh, this is not about airing our grievances. Uh, it's about getting to know each other, connecting with each other and the issues that are at the core of ourselves and our local communities. Uh, this is about being open in our hearts, connecting to each other, getting to know each other as people, uh, while also making uh, people aware of the issues, um, starts by getting to know each other uh, so that eventually we can also work together in the future as we consider to implement these uh, local solutions. I'd like to ask everyone to please keep yourself muted uh, and, not, and to also put your contact information into the chat window so that others on the call have your contact information, especially if you are new to the Global Unity Network, um, include your name, your organization, your contact info, like email, WhatsApp, telephone number. Uh, so uh, we will now have an open discussion and uh, come back to the chat uh, or the presentation. There's a few more slides just for the very last uh, closing as well. So and I'm, I'd like to call to see, is Nikki Depina here with us? Yes. Yes, she is. Hello, Nikki. Good yeah. morning. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so I can stop my share for now and so we can see each other. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, live. Live. Good, Jayanta, good afternoon. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but today, uh, before you do something, let us wish uh, Nikki as a happy birthday. Okay, excellent, excellent. We can we can do that. Today is uh, Nikki's uh, birthday. So, Nikki, officially, uh, happy birthday. Oh, wow, <laughs> excellent. Oh, Thank my you. God. Happy birthday, Nikki. <laughs> happy Thank birthday. you very much. Today, today, today uh, our tea party is offered for on behalf of Nikki only. Oh, and, she, <laughs> and Nikki's how old? 30, 35? <laughs> Yes, 35. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So I, I'm seeing, I am seeing some people that we haven't talked to before. Don Dodson is on our call. Perhaps he may might wish to introduce himself and his interest in some of these topics. Yeah, thanks everybody. Hi, how are you? Good morning, good afternoon. I'm drinking uh, red dragon uh, spice chai, which is cinnamon, uh, rooibos, and ginger. And it never has enough ginger in it. I can't get enough of that. Um, yeah, I, I think this uh, uh, invitation popped up on my LinkedIn profile because, or my feed because um, I've been uh, searching in tea sustainability for committee members. Um, I'm executive director and founder of what's called the Supply Chain Health Consortium. Uh, we currently we started off with a, a committee, a technical committee in coffee and cocoa, and we're adding tea shortly. What we do, we're focused on aligning corporations with SG, SDG number three, health, um, and uh, global health and equity from a supply yeah, chain perspective. So we're building data collection, visualization, and artificial intelligence, predictive analytics, standardization, and best practices around uh, taking action towards reducing health inequity, uh, increasing continuous improvement, and then uh, supporting health system strengthening, uh, again, all from a supply chain perspective. We'll go into multiple supply chains, and those supply chains will intersect. Uh, the action that is taken by manufacturers to reduce inequity in multiple health indicators will disperse into the communities that the, that the farms exist in. And the hope is that uh, this is a really valid way to solve health inequity uh, through value chains, right? Mm. The tea, the coffee is taken from some of the poorest people in the world, they are compensated in a way. Um, and uh, profits are of course celebrated on Wall Street. 
and very little is done towards their family, personal health. Um, so yeah, we launched about six months ago and um, it's great, mm. it's going great. Well, certainly we should have a follow-up conversation. I think there's, there's probably some very good alignment between what we are trying to do here and what you are trying to achieve as well, John. Uh, yeah. I think there, there, uh, there's a, a place for a very decent conversation, actually. Uh, we have a, a, one of our, our group's discussions is a, with a, some people in India uh, and uh, they wanted us to connect with, they are a member of the UN Global Compact as well. Mm -hmm. uh, they wanted us to connect with the Unilever, uh, which is, okay, I guess, true. one of the largest tea producers in the world. And oh, yeah. they said, well, we'll connect with Unilever, which is a UN Global Compact member, uh, both in Canada, where I am, as well as in India, uh, as, and wherever their, their offices are around the world, and we can engage in a conversation that hopefully at the high levels uh, with a company like Unilever who can possibly lead the way in the world uh, to changing the paradigm Absolutely. of how we, we produce tea. Uh, and yeah. we are, of course, promoting this, this climate smart uh, production methodology. Absolutely. And, and we started actually, uh, we have, uh, we started in coffee and cocoa. And so kind of by default, we have a large population of committee members uh, in Ghana um, but also in India, we're doing a pilot with Tata Coffee, which is, I think they own Tetley and a couple of other, uh, not the coffee part, but Tata itself owns uh, multiple uh, tea producers. And so, mm. yeah, we hope to make a quick jump from, from coffee and cocoa into tea. Um, mm -hmm. cool. Very cool. So this is this is good. So we have we have a, a, a new connection that I think that we can now uh, move forward. Actually, part of the reason I did create this tea diplomacy initiative because uh, we we've been focusing on food as something universal that every person on earth can relate to because everybody eats. That is sort of is a universal thing for all of humanity. Uh, where if we can leverage our food systems to achieve sustainability and now we're looking at, at beyond sustainability so our vision is actually to look beyond 2030 and saying what is the next stage of the the global goals so the global goals now are the sustainable development goals 2015 to 2030 well what is in seven and a half years from now after mm -hmm. 2030 what is that next set of goals we hope that at those next set of goals will be the regenerative development goals. So mm -hmm. moving beyond sustainability to regenerate the earth through these, through these regenerative practices in these local communities on our, our farms, the producers, where they can transform agriculture, they can transform mm -hmm. food production to these regenerative practices to help restore nature and biodiversity uh, and create food systems um, that can be, so we can leverage the food systems to create not just a sustainable economy but a regenerative one so mm -hmm. the regenerative economy that leaves no one behind is, is basically yeah. the, the premise that we're we're trying to build this network now of professionals in regenerative uh, solutions so this is what the the essence of the global unity network is at this point okay so i'm building okay. this with my colleagues both here in canada but as well as uh, our counterparts in africa so we have many of these regenerative developments professionals on, on the call today, including, for instance, Juliette, who's, who's been patiently waiting. And I think she, she looks like she'd like to say a few words about the work she's doing in South Africa, for instance. <laughs> so go ahead, Juliette. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, hi, and hi, good, good afternoon to everyone. It's afternoon this side. And, and welcome, John Dodson. Um, yes, no, 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 I, I'm, thanks, thanks. Um, Professor Lloyd, for the opportunity again. It's good to be here. I've attended all, this is my third um, tea diplomacy session, and I'm glad to be here. Um, yes, no, I, okay, as just part of my introduction, my name is Juliet Niabo. I am based in South Africa, I've been born and bred in South Africa. I do, I live in the northern part of South Africa, of Johannesburg. 
but I do my work in Soweto and in the different townships. What townships are for, because not everybody knows what a township is. Townships are basically places that were created in order for people to move from the original places of, of birth to come and work in the city. So townships are basically anything that gives people access to industrialization, work, et cetera. Um, yes, and um, what I love about this session, and it also touches on what John was saying, is that whole opportunities that come with tea. Um, as you, you might know that Weibos is one of the biggest teas, um, one of our biggest brands that we send out to the world as South African is very unique to us. Um, and my family, that's all we drink. We drink, it's very healthy, it's very calming. After some of the sessions that we normally have on these groups, I have Weibo's tea, <laughs> you know, it's very calming and it's very relaxing. Um, so what I want to touch on is possibly, there could be opportunities to, to look at other brands uh, because there are two or three dominating brands in South Africa of Weibo's, um, to look at other brands that can be introduced to form for greater employment opportunities, because there's a lot of unemployment, especially in the urban areas. So whatever that is there that can be learned from what is being done in other countries, whether it's in India or elsewhere, it'd be good for, for South African young people to get into that space. Um, I work mainly with children, youth, women, and also the elderly. So what I love about tea, unlike coffee, because like for instance, we had to wait till we were at least 12 years old before we could drink tea, uh, a coffee. But tea, you can literally drink from the age of six months. Um, but the fact that you, you'd be told, no, you can't have coffee, it made you want, they were actually marketing it because we used to think what's in this thing that makes everybody not want us to drink it, but they are drinking it. So I, I'd like us to look at opportunities to market tea. My son drinks tea and he loves tea. Um, but he has actually figured out that when I put a lot of hot milk in it, I'm trying to get him to sleep. So, um, <laughs> so I, I'd like to find opportunities that are being used in other worlds um, to promote tea amongst young people. I work with youth um, as an alternative to coffee, as an alternative to energy drinks, because there's a huge consumption of energy drinks. So in terms of food security and uh, this particular day, uh, Professor Lloyd, the, the issue of food security is very important and the food that gets eaten a lot in South Africa, there's plenty, but the one I want to speak about is cabbage. Uh, obviously other vegetables, but cabbage, um, firstly, firstly uh, fortunately it's very healthy. Um, and there's another word for it, it's called jelamut. It's an African's word that means you must. So they call it jelamut because when all is not there, when there's no tomato, when there's no onion, when there's nothing else and there's no meat, jelamut, you must eat cabbage. So it's like you don't have a choice. But fortunately, it's one of my favorite fruits, uh, foods. So it's, it's one of those things where on a day like this, I remember how certain things like those that we must eat, the jelamuts, are actually healthier than the things that people choose to eat. So on a day like this, cabbage and other fruit and vegetables are very critical. But the one that comes to mind is, is cabbage because um, in most communities, there's always tea. Elders will always have tea. Um, they'll have cabbage and they'll have whatever rice and pap and everything else. So even when a, a, a family is very poor, one thing that they will make sure they have is cabbage. So mm -hmm. I appreciate this day and I look forward to um, more discussions as we join our groups, John and everyone else, to see how we can promote tea um, as a staple uh, drink, you know, to counteract the other poisonous things that we all drink. And I'm glad to say, this is my last sentence, uh, I've been off coffee for almost two months now. Um, mm. So... <laughs> <laughs> I still drink coffee and, every day. <laughs> I never thought it was possible because I've been drinking it all my life. Um, and it's, it's a great feeling. Um, and uh, I'd like to promote it, to promote tea the way that, yeah. And I've, as I feel the difference, you know, um, yes. Okay. Well, so one thing I'm cool. hoping, for instance, is we can also transform the honey project into, into something where we're using, we're planting tea as well. Uh, yes. And I actually wanted to mention as well, about cabbage, um, mm. 
So one of my favorite foods of all time, of all time actually is kimchi, which is a very Korean thing, but it's cabbage that's been uh, brought to ferment uh, with the, the hot chili peppers. So chili peppers is another thing that can be grown. Um, and I think introducing, I think, I don't know how many Africans know about kimchi or have even tried kimchi, but it, for me, I actually didn't like it the first time I tried it when I, when I went to South Korea so many years ago. But I tried it so many times because I, I lived in South Korea for so many years that now I cannot have it. Or, or I, I cannot live without having kimchi in my fridge all the time. Yeah. Uh, it's it's uh, just something that I love so much. I have it with every meal. Yeah. Um, and fermented foods are so good for you, actually. It's another thing. It's, it's, a, it's a way of preservation. Yeah. Um, just the last point linked to that. I was at a funeral. Unfortunately, we're burying one of our kids uh, who drowned uh, last week. Sorry to mention that. But, um, you know, there's always food. And the ladies who dish up were not impressed that I kept on. When they were dishing up the cabbage, I was standing there like, I need more. They say, oh, do you want meat? No, thank you. Do you want rice? No, thank you. And I was literally standing there and say, more cabbage, more cabbage. So I, I, like, I like cabbage too, actually, not just kimchi, but kimchi, just, yes. I, I keep a cabbage in the fridge all the time, a fresh cabbage, mm -hmm. and have cabbage salad with uh, balsamic vinegar, my favorite. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no. Great. So I'm on a mission to promote cabbage and tea. Thank <laughs> you so much. So I'm seeing Joshua has his thumb up. I'm not sure if Joshua would like to say something. Perhaps not, but go ahead, Joshua. I'm enjoying the conversation. Yes, so I was enjoying the conversation on the cabbage and kimchi, the whole tea thing. So it's really nice to see that. Um, regarding tea, I'm used to the black tea, green tea is usually imported in Africa. Here in West Africa, we have this tea brand called Lipton. It's been here for like as long as I've been born. <laughs> so um, we usually use that tea. So we also have some other foreign teas we get to use. So looking at local tea um, for, for my culture, where I come from in Nigeria, my tribe we usually prepare um, some herbs which I would refer to as tea because tea is made out of plants and herbs. So we usually have some herbs. Um, I don't know the scientific name for some of those herbs, but we use like bitter leaf and um, scent leaf. These are purposes, these are for health purposes. So we also have some local farmers that farm some tea in Nigeria and other parts of West Africa. So that's a little I have to say for now, and I'll be back to say more later. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I, I actually wanted to mention that uh, we should probably also connect with people like um, Prophet Cox, who is also spearheading our, our uh, health initiative, um, because part of, part of that whole conversation around health is about herbal medicines. Uh, so many have come come from these these unique, uh, different different plants in our in these communities all across Africa around the world where we can uh, tap into the knowledge, especially of the indigenous peoples and their knowledge of these different herbal remedies and 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 tinctures and teas that are that are healthy for us, and we can develop a whole brand uh, of climate smart certified products across a, a range of different uh, um, teas and medicines and, and uh, other healthy uh, foods. So Lisa, I saw, I saw your, your hand up just for a second there. You'll have to unmute yourself. <laughs> so I, I was doing that because of the cats were <clears throat> milling around. Um, now here in California, tea is not uh, an actual product we grow, except for a, a few small farms in the Sierra foothills around the Auburn-Sacramento region. But um, 
here in San Francisco, having a large hub of importers uh, that uh, bring things here um, to the port of Oakland, we do get access to a lot of wonderful teas from around the world. And a few that I always keep in stock um, here are, once I say the names, you'll recognize them for medicinal purposes. Um, uh, there's a chrysanthemum tea that comes in from China. Um, I also have red raspberry leaf that I collect myself um, from time to time to pull up my stocks. Um, and then there's a podarco. Uh, now podarco tea is made from a bark. Um, it is uh, used to bring in additional nutrients when one has uh, been very ill or is under treatment. Um, it's commonly used by people who have uh, early stages of cancer um, because cancer treatments or the more traditional cancer treatments through the medical profession um, can very much upset the digestive system and many will lose a great deal of weight because the appetite disappears. Uh, Podarco tea um, stimulates appetite for mm -hmm. people in those types of positions or more. Um, and I have a brother up, in, uh, up by the uh, border of Canada who has long been a gatherer of wild herbs and for a period of time actually was involved in a company that sold rooibos tea. Um, so a, a lot of herbal background um, uh, growing up and learning about all the wonderful teas that are being grown in different regions of the world, um, not just the, the black teas that we see so much on the store shelves. So mm. I thought I'd put my tickets in. <laughs> Here at 5.30 so, in the morning. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, that one of the things that I, I loved so much about traveling when I was younger was, uh, especially in Asia, where I was learning, I was traveling in, in Taiwan and China and Korea and Japan and uh, throughout the, in India as well, uh, was to learn about all of these so many things that were, uh, even in the, in the local, um, corner stores that you would never see in North America or possibly also in Europe. I mean, it's just variety is incredible uh, in some of those cases. It, it just, and well, and Jared, some of it very local. Well, just growing, just growing up um, in the more rural areas of the Pacific Northwest as a child, uh, many of us in those disparate regions um, would uh, can and preserve and actually glean from the land. Uh, I remember a girlfriend in high school, uh, I would go over there in the summer to help her mother make root beer. Um, and I, I know that when people hear of root beer, they just think of the taste, but it is actually a combination of roots. Um, uh, and uh, something that I can say that's similar to that is sassafras. I know people have heard about sassafras tea. Um, it tastes like root beer because uh, basically uh, it's the same source that brings mm -hmm. up that flavor. Um, and when you are taking a lot of your food from uh, going through the land and learning of the, of the berries and the nuts and the local foliage and root systems, um, the incredible value and diversity to the diet uh, can bring you a lot that uh, supplemented and manipulated foods just cannot do. Um, I was very, it's one of the few things I was really grateful for living in the middle of nowhere um, was the fact that we had this huge variety of food. Yeah, well, it's the knowledge I think that is missing especially our young people not need to understand this. So I, I told the story, uh, I think, in a, in a previous uh, IGU summit event, uh, where I, I was talking with some people at the end and I said, look, uh, I know actually just from my own knowledge that in front of my building, I'm in a condo, I'm on the sixth floor, but in front of the building, there are ginkgo trees, ginkgo nut trees. 
and they fruit every year or every couple of years. And I could go out there and harvest them and, and roast them and have ginkgo nuts for free from the trees outside my building. Why not? I mean, it's there. Um, so uh, the, this, but nobody knows and we are, haven't been able to organize any sort of little community group just to go out and harvest all the ginkgo trees because there's hundreds oh. along the street that the city has planted. We could just do that and, and that would probably provide, we could then go roast it communally and sell it to the local local shops or, or some well, others, right? Well, and the, the interesting qualities of the, the ginkgo itself, I mean, it's like if people knew that they could use ginkgo as a, a wonderful, much cheaper alternative to uh, coffee <laughs> because of its <laughs> qualities for maintaining, you know, high amounts of, uh, well, it's, it's a stimulant. Um, mm -hmm. So, gosh, if people knew that, all those trees would be just denuded. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they, they, right now they just they're they're not harvested. They just fall to the ground, right? And so it's it's kind of feel like wasted food. That's the the city planted the trees. Yeah, no, the, we have we. I see the same thing here, all the way up and down the west coast in Washington. It's apple trees that cities plant because apples are native to the region. Um, and then down here, of course, uh, it's all types of citrus that one can imagine. And mm -hmm. you go by these yards where people have lemon trees and it's just dropping and rotting on the ground. You, you want to go and knock on their door. Mm -hmm. Well, this is part of what we'd like to do as well is work to, to create these unity garden learning centers and then bring the community together to these places to sort of organize themselves to say, look, we, we understand what's in our communities. We can go harvest these and we can bring them back and, and process them on site, uh, whatever processing needs to be done, and then resell them back into the community. Um, oh, whether well, uh, even to the corporations, right? And, and so well, you and, get local, really hyper local food, almost as we call it. Well, and, <laughs> and, and, and even the few uh, fairly wild grown areas that the city still maintains, um, you can go out there and find all manner of plants. Uh, and greens and wild onions, um, which comes directly to mind, and sorrel, which is a marvelous thing to put fresh into soups and whatnot, because it's incredibly nourishing. Uh, but um, I mean, like you say, <laughs> things you can literally pick off. Mm -hmm. That we it's don't. A, it's a matter of understanding, and this is what this is why the four K clubs are so important. Uh, yes. the the model we're taking from Kenya which is which is being developed by those with those partners that are working with us to bring these to young people especially in the schools right? yes and after school programs as you mentioned as well right? well and this is uh, so much an important part of indigenous culture that still exists out there and for those of us who have uh, some indigenous ancestry uh, many of us as children have heard stories of just going out there and how well, how rich and wealthy the land really is in terms of feeding you back without it being torn down and developed. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I'd like to- Well, part, part of it is preservation, but also another part is restoration of a lot of these degraded landscapes. And that's-, well, and, that's... and that passing on of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that Stephanie Schuller will introduce herself. She's an important person in our in our learning network. She is uh, she's the head of our our uh, network development team. Just yes, absolutely, you. absolutely. Thank you so much. I'm Stephanie Schuller, and I'm based in Toronto, Canada. Actually, walking distance from Lloyd, which is really, really, really. Um, amazing and it was accidental or maybe not maybe in you know, maybe there's no accidents but i'm it's really the universe. excited it's the universe it's the universe i really you know I, um so many things i mean could you imagine a world where children i mean i'm i'm finishing my doctorate of education at the university of toronto oise um 
could you, and I'm all about education and the well-being of kids and communities. Could you imagine children leaving the schoolhouse? You know, they're there usually sedentary for seven, eight hours a day. Could you imagine them leaving the schoolhouse and actually going to their schoolyard and actually going to their trees and bushes and finding out the gold that's there, the food that's there? I mean, this is so much of why why I believe in what we're doing, to you know, to get the children outside, to get the children to connect with nature as we are stewards of nature but there's such a disconnect and to really to be able to learn that this tree and this branch and and this weed are medicine medicine food all of those things um you know and there's you know juliet on the opposite side of the world in south africa drinking rooibos and i drink rooibos too you know so what a beautiful thing that we can share together and i hope that we we do in person and i also have cut out coffee though i love it as well but it, you know um but uh you know like the sumac um sumac uh, bush here in in ontario canada it's everywhere it's along the highways and of course you shouldn't drink anything along the highways because it wouldn't be in good condition but it's everywhere it's a bright red bush that we drive by everywhere throughout, throughout <laughs> the whole province and um nobody knows the wonderful what tea and it has wonderful medicinal properties, like major medicinal properties. No, nobody and it knows. Tastes but great, actually. The tea is a wonderful tea. I love it. Good flavor. Yeah, it's amazing. And um, I have friends who, who um, around their house last year, for the, the they dis they discovered their sumac trees they couldn't believe it and if they actually start they harvested it for themselves to drink because they they you know this is on vogue now to do these to do these things to go back to basics to go back to the earth this is becoming more on vogue so this is a very important time for us to alleviate not to encourage sorry the learning opportunities for kids to really shift i don't believe in an imposed curriculum but to really in, suggest um that children get outside that children could even process their own teas that children could, could learn that the little um, buds and nuts and seeds that fall from trees that the gardeners come and you know take away are really, really so much medicine it's so empowering and I hope and I Lloyd and I and all of us that come on these calls regularly we hope to, that soon one day soon school children and schools and that whole concept of what, of what we're doing through the development years will look entirely different where there'll be movement and fresh air and natural light and interaction, interaction with each other, interaction with animals, interaction with nature. We are nature too, but we've become disconnected. And I think, I think in the more developed countries in the world, we become more, more disconnected. Like we, we, it's, there's a total separation. And I think it's the role of the learning communities um, the public schools, the private schools, the alternatives to we've got to start with the kids. We've got to start with food systems, security, learning with the kids. We've got to, and those, uh, and in turn, and immerse the play in there. I, I have a background, a degree in play, and it's so important whether that, and unstructured play, whether we throw a ball in, whether we hold hands and we dance, we listen to music or we're sitting together playing cards. These are things that are, are not, we value them, but that society doesn't value them. We're hoping to encourage to encourage these, uh, the, the, these areas for well-being of the kids, well-being of the elders, we, well-being of the youth. We have a world youth mental health crisis that I always talk about. And so we've got to do anything and everything to try to change, turn that around. And I'm pleased to be having my a morning cup of tea with you today and one day we'll do it in person and to help elevate all of these um learning opportunities all of these 
things that should be embedded in our society, as Lisa and Easter said, it's part of, you know, all, all indigenous culture, uh, the, the ways of learning, you're not sitting in a schoolhouse, it's outside in community, it's outside in our natural spaces, whether we live in really, really cold Canada, or uh, other warmer spaces, we've forgotten these wisdoms, we've forgotten the wisdoms, and we have the opportunity right now to garner these wisdoms from the elders, this gender generation who are still around, who know the old ways, we call them the old ways, but they're the wise ways. And to merge them into our societies, we have a chance. Um, we have a huge chance right now because with COVID being, you know, in this era of COVID, I believe it's a transformative time. I believe and I hope that it's a time, you know, like um, the Industrial Revolution, like uh, the Italian Renaissance, those times that will be remembered. And I believe that we, as a team, are um, encouraging that transformation, supporting that transformation, co-creating that transformation for the well-being of our communities and the kids. So I'm just so proud to be with you all and, uh, and thank you so much. Thank you, Stephanie. I, I wanted to notify everybody that I only actually have about 15 or 20 minutes uh, at the most. Uh, my, my wife also teaches on, on uh, Saturday mornings as well. So she's, she's at the next desk beside me uh, preparing for her class. Uh, so I'm, I thought, Lisa and Nice, maybe you, did you have your hand up or something? You wanted yes, to say a few words? I wanted, I wanted to mention to Stephanie, um, uh, for many, many years, uh, the nation of Finland has been uh, known for putting out uh, the best uh, statistics in terms of schooling of the young. And they spend very little time in the classroom. They actually conduct most of the schooling outside, allowing the kids to take risks in their play, uh, monitored, of course, but none of these prohibitions that we constantly train our children into um, and to question and of course uh, learn about plants and glean from the land um, and so something that you might want to take a look at um, is their system. Um, I could sit here and date myself and say that as a child uh, we had recess, we had physical education in schools, we mm -hmm. had those two times a day where we'd be out in the yard running around, throwing things, climbing things, breaking an arm, breaking a nose, whatever. Um, so uh, bringing back recess, one of the precepts that, that we used in order to begin the Young Dancer Project or get the permission to go inside the systems and start designing uh, dance-based programs for every age, every need, um, a lot of that was based upon this knowledge that many of us older dancers have regarding this type of outdoor education, this type of interaction and, and activation of the parietal lobes of the brain, uh, mm -hmm. which increases our abilities to communicate, uh, to uh, have creative problem solving, um, and in certain cases, three-dimensional thought. Back to you, Lloyd. <laughs> Oh, actually, well, I just want to. I wasn't sure. I I, did, I knew, never knew that recess was no longer a thing. I thought it, it was still part of the school. All, all, all of these very important things have been removed uh, or minimized in the school, the school, including the arts. And it's it's you know as Lisa said for right brain, left brain for balancing. I remember being recently at a national conference for children with, with with divergent needs special needs as they call it and uh i remember someone giving a talk that said how important it is for children with special needs to cross the midline with their legs and she was showing us exercises and with the arms and you know you should get them to, to stand up from their desk every so often to do this thing and it seemed so contrived and i went out afterwards and i spoke to a few people who were a generation older than me and I said when you were young did you go to school did, was there community dances were there school dances oh yes every Friday Saturday and maybe even Sunday you know the, uh, my mother's generation and uh, I mean th there's no school dances anymore there's none of community dances anymore kids don't dance anymore like this isn't a thing anymore where you actually 
touch each other and whatnot. But I thought, you know, and so I said, so at your dances, when you were dancing with whoever, would you cross the midline? You know, like, you know, like, I don't know if any of you know the movie Grease, you know, dancing and whatnot. They said, of course, we were thrown in the air and on the ground and twirled and this and that. We, we've lost these simple little things where we have to tell children to get up and do this exercise across the midline. Whereas if they were outside or in a casual dance, you'd be doing it. This is why humans, our human bodies do when you're running and playing soccer, when you're dancing, all these things. And we're here to remind everybody and, and to revive all the, the wisdoms that are age old, that are cross-cultural and, and cross, um, across the universe, because we've all been spread out across the universe, wherever we might have emanated, uh, you know, just, just like... Um, drinking teas and all that it's all over the world the sumac that comes from south africa i'm drinking in toronto or the the rooibos Ooh. i'm drinking in toronto <laughs> yeah so, so uh, i'd like to i'd like to go to uh john baptiste he's had his hand up for a few moments here john baptiste can you uh, unmute yourself um i should actually close up fairly so soon maybe just go uh, do my closing presentation just so the last few pages are have been displayed and then uh, we can continue our conversation, but I'll have to put myself on mute um, just because I, my wife will be starting soon. <laughs> we'll keep it going, Lloyd, no problem. So John Baptiste, are you able to unmute yourself? I see your hand, your hand has been up for a while. If not, perhaps what I can do is just go through the last few slides Sure. Of, of the presentation, just so I, I don't interfere with my wife's uh, teaching. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen just one more time here. And let's see. So I had shown this. Before. Um, this is just a closing, just to say uh, uh, welcome and thank you for attending this third. Uh, Global Unity Network Ayagba uh, Tea Diplomacy Initiative event. Uh, I do want to thank um, Nikki Depina uh, from Global Peace Let's Talk uh, and Dr. Jayanta Choturi from the Global Forum for Sustainable Rural Development, uh, as well as Andrew Williams Jr. and Joseph Akinola uh, from Andrew Networks and the World Humanitarian Organization for Peace and Equity, along with Gabriele Malaika from JAFOA. Uh, in Uganda, Ganga Awal from the National Federation of Women Farmers and Appropriate Technology in Asia, or in, in Nepal, uh, Juliet Miabo from Soweto CSI Council in South Africa, Stephanie Schuller from uh, Maui Aloha Project, Mark Prasangi from Carbon Shot Earth, Carlos uh, Sanko from Unity in Africa and Diaspora, Angela Argentina from Kindred Kitchens and our uh, newest members of the Tea Diplomacy Initiative, uh, Precious uh, Isaac from Unity Net Nigeria, uh, Patrick Nkoma, Nkoma from Unity Malawi, uh, Joshua, Joseph, Joshua, sorry, and John Awunwi from uh, Unity Net Ghana, and all of the guests and supporters who came on the call today as well. Um, I do want to put uh, more information about some of the links to our other uh, networks into the chat so the people that are on the call today, especially are able to access some of these networks that we have, we call ourselves, again, a network of networks. So we have a number of networks uh, with common branding, um, but as we develop the network, we will eventually have this uh, interchange for peace. Um, I wanted to just finalize uh, before I close, um, at the very end of the conversation, I will play uh, some music, uh, but for now, I will be just closing our event um, so that I can allow my wife to do her class. Um, so uh, the music that I will be playing later is of a lady by the name of Lufia M. The song called Tulan Lisio. Um, uh, I will also put translated lyrics of the song into the chat. Uh, with the song at the end of our conversation. It's about four and a half minutes long. Um, and uh, along with the poem that you heard earlier by Jack Black God, uh, we do play these two things at every tea diplomacy event. We're now playing them at our IGU summits. 
Um, this is actually, you're seeing on the screen, a screenshot from the first inaugural uh, Tea Diplomacy Initiative event we did on March 21st, 2022, um, along with photos of Luthia M, uh, who was uh, singing that uh, uh, Tea Diplomacy theme song we'll play later. Um, but I wanted to share as well an article in the chat, um, the Global Movement for Localization. Uh, it's uh, an article about the beautiful and potent paradox of localization. And I think this is part of the transition we're going through right now. Uh, so with that, uh, I will mute myself and allow people to continue to the conversations. And I will, uh, again, be putting things into the chat. Well, thank you so much, Lloyd. Uh, this is... <clears throat> And perhaps you could stop your stop sharing for just a moment, Lloyd, and we're going to show a gallery view to allow those that are here to know that you're not alone. We're actually here. <clears throat> uh, this is Andrew Williams, Jr., so let me uh, welcome all of you here. I apologize. It's kind of early year in California, but technically you're all my, my guests and you're all part of the network, so welcome here. We're really pleased and honored to have you. Dr. Nikki, I'm always in full support of Global Peace, Let's Talk. And I uh, look forward to finding ways we can net and network together with all, the, all of our new guests here as well. There are, are a couple of new names <clears throat> that are just coming in. But in the chat, I have put in, uh, information about a project. Lloyd, you mentioned uh, you're going to a Filipino event later today. So we have actually launched um, a project in the Philippines with indigenous people there near Treasure Mountain. For the first time in history, we're actually bringing water fresh water to farmers there in the Treasure Mountain area. Um, that's in the Sierra Madres Mountain area. And um, it was actually the, the Negritos that were the original, I guess, Aboriginal uh, peoples of Philippines, some of whom are still in the San Andreas area. So we're actually bringing the world around to localization, as Lloyd likes to call it. Uh, to find ways we can bring the, the sustainable development goals to those people that are not fully engaged with the rest of the world, but it's up to us to connect that dot. We actually, uh, Lloyd Helferty was one of the first of my appointees back in uh, September 21st of 2019 of this group. Uh, you'll see um, A-H-I-A-B-G-A, -A -A. that's a word that is an acronym for the Ad Hoc International Advisory Board of Global Ambassadors. Uh, as I said, I'm Andrew Williams Jr. And technically I, I kind of co-founded it, but it, it created a viral network around the world. So now you'll find our logo. If, as a matter of fact, you can Google us <laughs> and you'll find all of many of our activities here. This event being held today uh, is just one of the events we held, hold on a weekly basis. I think we're in week 54 now of the events we have on Thursdays. We've just begun um, with Prophet Cox, a 52 week one on Tuesdays for health SDG number three. On Mondays, we have the Africa and <clears throat> Diaspora Unity Net that's yes, also slated to happen for the next several months, if not years. And we do want to make this platform available to anyone here that has a project to reach a wider audience than just Zoom. We do stream this on Facebook at uh, the Ayakba Network. We also upload it to YouTube, but we will be going live on Roku and Amazon Fire once we polish up our presentations to reach a wider audience. But now, again, um, I do want to say to John Dotson, I do look forward to finding ways we can work and network together. Uh, your project is something that's close to my heart. And I do look forward to working and networking with you. So uh, there was a hand raised by John Baptist. I, I lowered it a little earlier, but John Baptist, if you're available, please introduce yourself. And if there's Sir Bailey, I see you've joined us. Please also feel free to unmute and introduce yourself. Uh, so John, if you're available, and Edwin, I see you're there too. So this is a family affair. Uh, either raise your hand or just open your mic. Edwin, please just go right ahead. Tell us who you are, where you're from to start with. Thank you. Yeah, should I start first? Yes, okay. go right ahead, thank you. Yeah, my name is Edwin Sunday. I'm from Kampala here in Uganda, and I work with the stream. My 
primary work is to think and I'm specialized in innovation. Small one, please. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Thank you. I go ahead. Yes, please. Yeah, Thank this you. Is, yeah. yeah, this is my first time, I think, to be on dialogue, and I believe in dialogue. I believe in dialogue that can promote unity, dialogue that will promote innovation, especially among our young people. I believe in dialogue dialogue that will create a difference in our life. Uh, I am trying to connect to you guys, the most experienced people. And uh, I think I look forward to working with you. Well, thank you. That's a brief introduction. Please feel free to arrange a time when you can come back and perhaps make a presentation and that may include screen sharing so that you can share your PDF or Zoom or website about work that you're actually doing. As I understand it from chats I've read so far, you're very actively engaged in your community and also in industry. We do wanna connect that dot. We understand that this is the African Continental Free Trade Area launch last year, but COVID has derailed that to a degree, but we have to pull that back together. So we look forward to finding ways we can work and network with you. Thank you very much. My, my pleasure. Good morning. Okay, yeah, sure. Good morning, team. My name oh, is Sir are. James Bailey. I'm here in Los Angeles, California. Uh, grateful to uh, hear so many voices uh, on online, and not surprised because uh, that's that's how the Andrew Networks seems to be. As I see now, I'm looking at the screen, a lot of faces that I recognize, and just want to say good morning, happy uh, Juneteenth weekend, happy Father's Day weekend. Shabbat Shalom to everyone. Move in peace. Speak in peace. Um, scripture reference that woke me up this morning is just reminding us it's like when our Lord was on the cross, he said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Um, had a deep conversation with a gentleman and our sons yesterday. Uh, worked with a group called Menformation Project here in Los Angeles. Um, and on this Father's Day weekend, I just want to lift up the spirit of that relationship, fathers and sons. The end of uh, the Old Testament says, I send Elijah uh, before you to turn fathers into the son, to their children, and children to their fathers, lest I come and I smite the earth with a curse. And so that um, authority and discipleship, being lifelong learners, meaning that we're in lifelong relationship. Um, so for the, the, the foster and the uh, abandoned uh, the abused and the betrayed in, in our life. I send out a prayer and thank you for the work that you're doing because I know that it impacts the world, uh, people first um, and then the planet. Give thanks and praise always. Thank you, Ambassador. One love. Thank you so much, Sir Bailey. And special thanks to Sir Bailey. It was, I think, three years ago that we celebrated on June 5th is Environmental Day at Five Points Youth Foundation. That's fivepointsyouthfoundation.org, all spelled out. And Sir Bailey was one of the first people that, well, actually he had the first launch of his project called the Living Well Tour at our location in South Los Angeles. We're located only a few blocks away from a more infamous intersection of, uh, of Normandy and, and Florence where unfortunately the 1992 civil unrest and kicked off literally. And we uh, actually moved our location there 20 years later because the community was still, unfortunately, suffering the same challenges it had then. This marks our 10th year there. So, Sir Bailey, let's make sure sometime this year we commemorate our working together throughout all this time and find ways we can get ready for it. We understand the World Cup is coming to uh, Los Angeles in 2026. Bless and in, in 2028. So our task is to make our community uh, tourist ready so that we can engage yes. our community ambassadors to engage uh, the rest of the world with what we're doing. So, Sir Bailey, thank you so much for all you do. Bless up and thank you. I want to give a big shout out to my dad on Father's Day weekend. Earth, Wind & Fire will actually be playing in the Bank of California um, with Santana. They had a great show last night in San Diego. Um, my son, Strong Brave Yaya, also a musician, 
Um, I, I hope that everyone online here will, will check him out and support him. I'll put the link to his music in the chat um, because we need that for that, that the, the spirit of that music to pass to the next generation. We need this generation, the folks that I'm seeing here to share with the kids and, and, and let's go. So thank you so much, Ambassador. Peace. You're very welcome. Peace. All right, John Baptist uh, Jafoa, I believe you were able to unmute yourself. I'll ask you to unmute if, you're, if you need assistance. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, good. Are you, Can everyone hear me? Yes, thank you so much. Go right ahead, please. And begin with who you are and where, you, where you're from. Thank you. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. This is Malaika. I logged in as John Baptist. Uh, I'm happy to Yes, I am happy to be part of the, the meeting. And um, I am from Uganda, Kampala. My names are John, uh, my names are Malaika Gabriela Ligami from Uganda. Uh, ED Jafoa is an aged care organization that adds and supports the elderly and the orphan children under their care. I am so happy to be part of this meeting, the T Diplomacy. Here in Uganda, it's a way to bring the intergeneration elderly together. Time like now in the evening, like about four, five o'clock, like here where I am, I'm seated under a tree. These are the times when the elderly are sipping their tea because first of all, it's cheap to prepare tea. It's cheap to serve tea to more many people than giving them food. And also when you come to tea, it's, you take time. You take time as you sip the tea, as you, you share out your inner story. So through this tea meeting, since I joined the, the tea diplomacy uh, WhatsApp group, I have learned a lot and I have used that idea that I've gotten through these meetings to, to take to the communities that I'm serving, to take to the people that I am advocating and supporting in this community. use household. We go down there, we prepare that tea, the homes prepare tea. And most of these older persons, sugar, many of them, they are having diabetes. So we encourage them to take honey tea. And uh, through this, you see them sharing, sharing their inner pain, sharing their wisdom, sharing what they went through, sharing the lessons they have learned through life. And I believe as we share and uh, we involve many people in such a meeting that we are having today, we shall have a change community, change people, change mindset, and change nations, and as well change continent, and of course, a better world or a better mother earth to live in. So thank you so much, organizers. Thank you so much, Andrew Networks and Professor Lloyd and Madam Nikki for all the organization for such a meeting. Thank you so much. That's all from me. <laughs> well, thank you so much yeah. for joining us. Uh, Judith, la, 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 that was so precious. Yeah, sorry, Andrew, that no. was so precious. Thank you so much for giving that talk. We love you. We send yeah. you lots of love and lots of hugs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Dr. Nikki, please take a moment. We do have new people here, and you are Global Peace Let's Talk, and we are talking for peace. So do you have a special word for our audience now? Oh, I do. I am just so uh, want to share with you so much love and appreciation to everybody who presented little sections today. So from their hearts and things that matter most. And I think that is the magic of, of this platform is that we talk about the things that matter most. We're not bothering with things that matter least that is out of our control. We're looking at things that we can do to make a difference because it really is needed out there in the world. Our Global Peace Lit Talk is very proud to be connected um, to this platform because we believe that if we join hands and we work together, it makes us stronger. Alone, we can't achieve much, but together we can, because then our voices are real out there. I loved listening to the story about fruit trees 
Um, uh, especially, uh, Stephanie say that would it not be amazing if every child, when they leave school, they can go out in the garden and pick food to take home. But sadly, sadly, in Africa, it's almost impossible because the houses and the schools are built so on top of each other. There's no ground left for anything. You cannot plant a, a flower, never mind a tree. But if we raise our voices to that, it is possible that it can get attention by somebody. Um, because Africa is just growing and stretching. And what happens is that they just keep on building these, um, the communities on top of each other. But if we start raising our voices and say, can when you build on top of each other, can you also make space in between on top of each other to leave a piece of ground for fruit trees or a communal garden. So the tea initiative is a high impact uh, project because it's voices that are saying that we can do better. If you can build bombs and guns that are busy destroying the whole of the world with the war going on between Russia at the moment, millions and millions of dollars are going into guns and bullets. Why can millions and millions of dollars not go into making space to build a garden so people have food and you won't have this, this terrible situation of children having to go to bed without food? And I'm sharing this because I have traveled Africa intensively and I want to share with you that at one point I was in Uganda and they took me to a house where somebody had just decided he doesn't want to see the children sleeping in the street. So he took the children in without any funding himself. But then the little bit of work he did, he managed to buy a, a loaf of bread that he would then take home. And he would take that loaf of bread and share it between the 12, 15 children. Now you can imagine that every child only got a square, but not one of those children complained. They were grateful and they prayed and said, God, thank you that we had that square. So the work that you are all doing, why I'm sharing this with you is to say, thank you. You're not doing this for nothing. Andrew's project, I have great respect for Andrew. Andrew's project by uniting and Lloyd's bringing people together to talk about things that matter most is appreciated. So thank you very much to everybody's uh, session today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Nikki. We still have people coming in. Owl, I see you're here. Would you like to unmute and introduce yourself? Tell us where you're from and then Judith. And we do have Carlos here as well, but I'll open up the floor. Whoever speaks first can get the floor. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, it's kind of early for me, but sometimes you have to do what you have to do, don't you? <laughs> I am As we Kansas. do. I'm in Kansas City, Missouri, um, waking up. I am a holistic therapist, and I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for this. Uh, both of you, Andrew and Lloyd, for putting together this event on a regular basis. Most Saturdays, I'm still asleep. <laughs> thank you. Have a good day. I'm here. <laughs> well, thank you much. Uh, Judith, are you able to unmute and introduce yourself? I see you there, but I'm, I haven't heard you yet. Are you able to unmute yourself? And if not, Carlos, and then perhaps Mohammed. Um, was that Judith or Juliet? Uh, J-U-D-I-T-H. Okay. So, Carlos, I see you're here. Are you able to unmute yourself? If not, then Mohammed. Ambrose is here as well. Let's see if I can encourage you to unmute here. Hello. Or at least greetings. Go right ahead. All right. Thank you so much. Yes. My name is Carlos Richard Sanko. I'm currently talking from Sierra Leone, West Africa. I am the current uh, leader for UnityNet Africa Diaspora and also a co-founder of UnityNet International. I'm also the CEO for 
focus on rural development, uh, national non-governmental organization. But I have uh, some questions that I posted already. I needed clarifications around promoting tea. Uh, first of all, let me provide a small background. That I came from a family background that loved to drink coffee. So I am from that lineage, but uh, five years back, I was told by my doctor to only concentrate on drink tea. So for the past five years now, I've been drinking tea and I enjoy drinking tea. So it's very good for me. Uh, it's medicinal for my system. But the questions I have for the tea, for instance, in West Africa, it's not widely, I have not seen a tree, a, a tea, a tea tree. I've never seen a tea tree planted or a tea farm in West Africa. So the, I have been getting questions from community members or community people. They are asking where can we get tea to promote tea, uh, tea planting or tea farming in West Africa? That's one. Uh, for West Africa, we grow more cocoa, yet cacao and all these ones and coffee. So this is very common. And currently I just received an EU uh, grant that is coming up to promote value addition in, in cocoa and orange flesh potato into flour to send to Europe and other countries. As a result of the problem that is currently happening in Ukraine and Russia. So do I, what I also noticed that in West Africa, I noticed tea is not for children. Children don't drink tea. Yes, they said, according to what I learned, they should not drink tea because it's harmful for their system. So I have concerns around this one. And it's not common in schools or whatever in except you go to offices, few offices you see people drinking tea or coffee, that is common. Uh, so these are the concerns I have around tea and I love tea. And how can I promote tea? I have access to tea to promote it in West Africa. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Carlos. And my first answer is ask Google. I just typed in how to grow tree plants in Africa. And there were several immediate responses, but I'm not as versed in tea as others are. So I'll open the floor for any replies from those that know more about it than just general research. Any ideas? Okay. The floor is open. Uh, I'll just make you a small comment, which was, it was funny. Um, uh, not funny, it was good that my great-grandmother always planted tea at the back next to our tap. So I, she, she had tea, mint tea. So I grew up as a child, a very small child, where there was always mint tea just growing. So I, I find that it should be able to grow and rebos is grown in, in, um, in Africa, South Africa. So I think our climate and everything else is good for that. Um, and I think it's just a matter of how it's, maybe it's being controlled and they say, I don't know why it's, um, you don't have it in West Africa and there shouldn't be a reason why it shouldn't be grown there. So it's, it's actually an excellent project that you have, uh, uh, Dr. Carlos, um, that would be good for, for, for tea to be grown so that children can drink tea. Tea in South Africa, um, when children don't have milk or they don't have, the other drinks that are recommended by doctors, tea is the one thing that, that gets recommended from after they've done breastfeeding. Tea is the second safest thing to drink, not cold drink, not juice, because juice of the high content of sugar. 
So it's strange. Maybe they that that discouraging children from drinking tea because of shortage uh, and maybe lack of access. It almost doesn't make sense unless someone knows uh, something else. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Carlos. In the chat, I've also put a guide there to uh, growing tea plants, and there's a lot of information from South Africa and Kenya, but you're in West Africa, so this may be an additional income stream for you, Carlos, as you have an interest yourself in tea, and you may find ways to use grant proceeds to encourage more growth in that area. Certain more, yeah, certainly, uh, that is a fact. And the other thing also I want to say here, maybe we, I may not really have the, the answers I'm expecting is the, the traditional model of using tea, which is, for instance, what I know, you, or you boil it, you know, and maybe you, in that way. So what I noticed in West Africa, I noticed a lot of growing of uh, energy drinks or you call it sweet drinks or drinks or general, whatever you call it in different form. So I, I was thinking that uh, if we can have, uh, if we can move from the traditional way of using tea uh, to like what is happening now, you can, even whilst you are traveling, uh, you, want, you want to drink tea, you will be able to access it, and not only in a hot form, but in a different form. So I'm just thinking about the value of value addition in different modernized way. That's a discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, the floor again is open. We've been here almost two hours, so I'll be happy to host another, say, 10 or 15 minutes unless there is a new topic to be discussed. But the floor is open now for anyone that hasn't had a chance to introduce themselves or would like to make um, any comments. Now's the time. I have a comment. Go right ahead. I, mean, I would like yes. to um, make a comment about the, I don't know who that was that was talking about children and tea. And I just wanna say that it depends on what the tea is. The black and brown teas have a lot of uh, caffeine in them, so they may not be so good for children. And then people use sugar in them also, which is not a good thing. But um, there's so many substances or herbs that a tea can be made out of that is absolutely healthy. But it is the black and brown teas that I agree children shouldn't have. When, when we were children, my mother was a holistic therapist. When we would get a sore throat or have fevers, that's the only time she would give us the black or brown teas. And, um, and it always would help. So thank you. Oh, great. Yeah, no, it is true, if I may say, um, um, that a lot of teas do have caffeine and they encourage the consumption of sugar, uh, which needs to be replaced by healthier things. But I was talking more in terms of Rebo's tea. Um, in South Africa, that's the tea that children are encouraged to drink not the other commercial teas that everybody else makes. Thanks for that. Thank you for that correction. Yeah, thank you. But it was a man who was making the comment. I didn't see who he was. It yes. was me. I just put up a stronger voice. Just still me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Oh, that was it. Carlos. I think it was uh, Dr. Carlos. I don't know if he still wants to say something. Thank you. Well, I think for me, this is great in relation to maybe the types of uh, teas we are talking about here. So uh, as I'm thinking of going to like uh, an entrepreneurial uh, structure in terms of uh, tea, etc. So if I have the, the one that is appropriate for both children and adults, and also like what Lloyd mentioned, you can also drink tea in a cool in a cool form or in a hot form and then this is fine so if you can help me with the appropriate uh, tea that is 
that, that is useful for both children and, um, and adults, that is one. Then the other two, the other one is, why is it that when you seek, you mentioned just recently, when you seek uh, that particular, the brown, the brown and black tea is, is prescribed for you. Why is not the other one? Why is not the normal? So, uh, so what is the problem? Which one is more appropriate? Even, yeah, as we say, it is medicinal. Thank you. Well, that one, I guess, uh, Carlos, depend upon your doctor's advice. If it's being pre prescribed to you, then your doctor would be the person to ask. That would be, I think, the most appropriate way to get an answer that can help you make the right decisions, just in general. So again, the floor is open. Thank you so much, Carlos, for your contribution. Thank you, too. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Yes, Malika. Hello, Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, um, Prince. Mine is just a, a, can I say a question or an idea? Now Either, that yes. sugar, the, the more we take in sugar, this normal sugar, we have found out that most of these elderly persons as we age, we find ourselves having these age-related issues uh, like diabetes. So I was thinking, this question I asked in our last team meeting, but I didn't get a, a clear answer, whereby we can maybe run a drive, whereby we, we make the high Oh, Malika, I, I, Malika, please unmute yourself. I've muted you by mistake. I apologize. Sorry, can I start again? Yes, please. Go right ahead. Thank you. Okay. My question, it's, I don't know if it's a question or a, a, an idea. Instead of uh, us using the sugar, remember sugar has, has its it health-related issues. Like as we age, me who deal with and support the older persons, they age with them. Those who have been taking in a lot of sugar, you'll find that they have this disease like the diabetes. So I was thinking, uh, can we run a drive whereby we can now change the honey Instead of them pouring the honey in the cup and then you add water and then you add the tea, can we make this honey in form of crystals, like the, the crystal, like the, the tea bags, whereby they just take the honey bag and the tea leaves and they add in the cup just to make everything faster and they take it as the honey tea. And I've been hearing us talk about the tea and the, the tea leaves and the coffee but I've not had anyone talk about the soya because we also have the soya tea. Can we also promote the soya, soya planting like a smart agriculture soya? And out of this soya, actually we can get the soup and at the same time we get the soya tea, which is also healthy. And I think that soya doesn't have the caffeine or the, the okay, the caffeine. I was just thinking outside the box, can we do something like that, promote the soya? soya tea, uh, as we've been promoting the coffee and the, the tea leaves, we can also do that. I don't know if it's a question or it's an idea. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, the answer is yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> but I would also encourage you to understand we're here to self-empower your ideas and your thoughts. So I would encourage you then to begin your investigation and document what you want to accomplish, and then promote and promote that as a way that we can get other volunteers, assistants, interns to help you turn your dream into a reality. That's what I would suggest. But of course, the floor is open to any other comments. And if none, yes, Malika, inbox me and let's let's make it happen. Okay, I will do that. Then I'll idea. ask. Thank you so much. A good idea. Edwin Sande, I see your message in the chat. Do you want to unmute yourself and share it with the group? And yes, Lloyd, if there are no more, more questions or comments, we can end it. 
with the song Lift Your Jews. So we're moving towards uh, close. I'll... Now's the time. Go ahead. Okay, you I I was I was suggesting that you can use avocado seeds to make tea other than relying on green 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 tea. Avocado seeds you can drop them, put them on sand for like a week, and then squeeze them to put water outside. Then you can get tea out of it. Other than green green African tea has got some complications like uh, cancer, some health experts say that you can get cancer if you take too much tea, this uh, green African tea. So we are here in Uganda, we have substituted, uh, like in our commu local communities, we have substituted uh, avocado tea with uh, green African tea. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> Lloyd, it looks as though we're moving to close. Unless there are any closing thoughts, now's that time. Or Lloyd, it's back to you. Balls in your court.
What a wonderful way to end and begin. So Juliet Mayabo, tell us a little bit about that artist since you were the one that encouraged us to include this. If you're there, Juliet. Yes. Um, her name is Lu Luvia M. She, an amazing young lady who's, um, who's gonna rely and who relies on music for her livelihood. She's from Soweto as well. Mm -hmm. Soweto is such a big place. I mean, we've got unofficially 6 million people there, but officially they say 3 million. Um, she's from, if anyone knows the story of um, Sophia Town, how people were moved from a multiracial area of Sophia, Sophia Town, and they were pushed into the township. Midlands, she's from Midlands. Midlands is one of the townships where people were, black people were moved into. So she does come from what you call your volatile area, a vulnerable volatile area. Um, she's, she's quite ambitious. She's very humble, those who've met her online. She's very humble. And what I like about her is the fact that she understands what she wants to achieve, but the industry in South Africa, like anywhere else in the world, it's very hard for people who, who don't go out there even if they're talented. So one of the things that we're hoping to do is to promote it because she's so, she's so talented, but she's wonderful. And she got nominated for the South African Traditional Music Awards. And this song was one of the songs nominated. So we hope she does win. Um, she lives in a family of about 12 people. Uh, currently she does part-time work to make a living. Uh, but going forward, there's a bright future for her. Uh, Luvia M, and she's a wonderful young woman. And she represents a lot of people in, in our country who have a talent, but limited opportunities. And unless someone unadds them like a good tea, no one will know about them. So that's, that's about Luvia M. And that song is about her reaching her dreams. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, we've come to the end again. So now it's time for any closing thoughts. And if not, we're going to wrap this up. You can find the replay on Facebook in our Ayaka Network group. And Awo, isn't it time for you to give us a closing thought with a spiritual uh, message, Awo? Um, sorry, uh, sorry to interject. Can you remember to do a picture for this? Uh, for this, we did one for the first one. Um, <laughs> can someone coordinate that? <laughs> well, yeah. Stephanie, I you might want to fix your hair there. <laughs> yeah, I need it better. See, you have to understand it's very early in the morning here in Canada, so oh, I'm doing my best. <laughs> That's funny. Just move uh, to the side. <laughs> okay. Um, closing words. Um, thought for the day, drink plenty of tea, but make sure you know what tea you're drinking and why. Yes. Red clover sure. tea. Red clover clears your, uh, cleans your blood, dandelion cleans your blood. Mm -hmm. So research and see what you're drinking and know why you're drinking and what you need help with in your body. Yes. Love, light, and peace. Oh, so wonderful, yes. wonderful. Yes. All right, family, Who's, let me know when, you, when the picture's ready and we're gonna wrap it up. Um, who's, who's doing, doing the picture? Let's everyone try. I don't know how to. So I'll I also don't know how to. <laughs> I also don't um, know. Lloyd. Dr. Janta knows. Is he oh, here? yes, yes. Dr. Janta. He Dr. knows. Nikki, please enjoy your, 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 your birthday. While we're still finding the camera Thank person. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Janet. Thank you. All right, we're going to wrap it up. OK, is it done? Someone tell me. Uh -huh, okay. well, I'm gonna do uh, that. Uh, okay, I'll, I will do. The, I'll do it the old way. Sorry, I'll do it the old way. As okay. Artist, I'll take a dark screen. <laughs> take a picture. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, if all else, if. But when all else fails, you go to the old ways of doing things. Here we go. Smile. Right. <laughs> yeah. I need another one. Just one second. Okay. Just one yes. second. Um, there's one with Stephanie there. Okay. 
got that one now too. I think I think anyone who has a computer screen, I think you can go control shift F three, control shift F four, and it'll take a screenshot. Oh yeah, know. duh. Even shift <laughs> press screen. You made it sound easy. <laughs> <laughs> so Madam Judy. <laughs> Yes. Madam Julie, remind remind us about the meeting in the evening. All oh. Of... Yes. Oh yes, yes. Yes, to um in, in commemoration of uh, World Um Elders Abuse Awareness, which was on the 15th, we're having a uh, a summit in literally in two hours' time. Uh yes. where Malaika, Madam Malaika herself is one of the speakers. And um, uh, Stephanie, I don't know if she's aware, she's also giving a vote of thanks there. And Professor Lloyd as well. Yeah, something like that. Please do join us. It's very critical. We are going to be raising awareness about the abuse of elders. But the theme is we can all contribute towards the solution. That's what it's all about. So it's not going to be all heavy. It will be a bit heavy because that's the reality. But we also want to highlight and discuss what we can all do to protect and um, reduce awareness of the elders. Please join us in a few, uh, let's see, in, in less than two hours time. Thank you so much. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, thank there, you. There is, um, purple is the theme color for, for a World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. Um, and it also uh, supports, um, Pride, Pride Month, because it happens to be also on the Pride Month as well. Please do. <clears throat> and that's, yes, you can also see the link there uh, to actually join it directly. So if you like, you I can bet. always uh, maybe take another snapshot so you can have it. But uh, we'll be available in just a couple hours. Queen Nina Womack is going to be handling the moderation, but Juliet will be there as well. So all yes. of you are welcome and invited. She's actually one of the speakers. Um, yes. Yeah. Oh, Princess, right. oh, Princess Seppi is going to be, let's see here. What we, yeah, Princess Seppi, my daughter. My daughter is going to be the moderator. So yes, it'll be a full day. You'll enjoy it. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if, um, if we stopped yeah. recording. I don't know if I can share something said. Uh, she won't be able to uh, moderate. And I think as a small family that we are, um, as much as we celebrate the, the birthday, I just want to make mention so that we keep her in our prayers. Yes. Princess uh, Tepi's um, younger sister passed on this morning with her oh. three children. Okay. Um, oh. Yeah, so um, so that we keep her in our prayers and when we do talk to her, then we can send her our condolences. Um, they, yeah, it's from smoke inhalation. So, oh. yeah, uh, so those are the sad news. Um, but yeah, so if you do have the contacts, do send her condolences, but she's not able to talk. Um, of course, she will talk to you uh, uh, as her father, Prince Andrew, but, but everyone else, we can just send their WhatsApp messages. Oh, by the way, we do have someone that just stepped in. <laughs> so in honor of our tea diplomacy today, we're gonna be <laughs> diplomatically correct and invite our last guest, if you'd like, or she'd like to introduce him or her, herself now. This is how we do it. Adam yes. Gandor Jola, Jalo. We leave no one behind. Yeah, baby guy. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, can you unmute yourself? Let's see here. I'm gonna ask to unmute and ask to unmute. Okay, ask to unmute. Okay, balls in your court, Adam, if you like, you can make your, tell us who you are and where you're from. And if not, we're going to wrap it up. So the ball's in your court. By the way, if you want to save the chat, now's the time. All right. Well, with that, thank you so much for joining us for this Tea Diplomacy Initiative. Uh, Lloyd and Nikki, I hope you'll let us know what the next one will be. These seem to be gathering popularity as we go along. So uh, let's keep doing it. I love it. Bye-bye, everybody. All right, take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day. We love you. Love, love my Bye-bye. Have an awesome week. Wonderful.